Two. Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. It was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. All right. So we got these six days afterwards. We I guess it's from after the uh from last chapter taken off. And it says James, it says Peter, James, and John. All right. Who were they? Peter, James, and John. Who was Peter, James, and John? Mother Bell. Uh, uh Jesus' disciples. All right. Disciples. Part of 12. All right. Absolutely. All right. So all of them there says he brought Peter, James, and John. All right. So he brought them up to a mountain. So they went up. They, they uh, kind of moved themselves from, you know, people because it was always people always trying to gravitate and get around them and everything. So they kind of isolated for this moment. It says, and was transfigured before them. All right. So something happened. He changed. His appearance changed. All right. Um, Kai, read, read how his parents change. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. I'm sorry, um, verse 2, verse 2, I'm sorry. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. All right, so his face shined like the sun. So that's verbiage to tell us what? It was very bright, all right? And his raiment was white as the light. All right. So it was very just showing how bright he was. He just how he transfigured. What's happening right here? What is happening? Do we know yet? So when we look at this, do people just get as bright as the sun? Their face shine like the sun? Or their uh, garment um, was white as the light? Do people just transform like that? Is that something normal? No. All right, there we go. <laughs> no, this is not something normal, all right? Christ is doing something. He's illustrating something. Okay, so when you, if you remember the story, when Moses came off from the mountain, right, it's even the laws, what happened to him? There was something specifically that happened to him that was similar to this. Here's my Old Testament scholars. Mother Val, Mother Val. I think his hair turned white, didn't it? Yeah, well, he, he got very bright, right? He was, he, was, he was so bright that they asked him to do something. What is What did they ask Moses to do? Okay. <laughs> the sides getting ready. Um, what is something that they asked Moses to do? He had to do something because I was about to say he's so bright, right? Elder? He had to cover his face with a veil. He had to put a veil on him. Think about how bright you have to be to put a veil on you. That's something. They, he literally had to put a veil around him so people can see him. What was that symbolized? He was going and, and dealing with the, the most high. We, are, we already know it's not directly, but it's showing that. And just from dealing and getting those laws and everything from him, he was so bright that man couldn't even, you know, he was too bright to look at. His natural face. He had to put a veil around him. So remember, I remember um, a few classes ago on Friday night, we were kind of dealing with 
um, the father and we were saying how, you know, nobody's seen the father anytime and things of that nature, right? This is what it's showing you. That's why I say it's a, it's a different from what the, uh, the father show you in visions and his actual appearance. Because if you couldn't see Moses, he had to put a veil on him because you can't see his face. How you think the father is going to be? How bright you think he's going to be? Y'all see? So we thinking about these things. This is why you, it's, he referred to that invisible God is, is so bright, that glory in their glory state, we can't behold it. It's too, it's too much righteousness there that our eyes, our, our, our um, carnal eyes can't, can't take it, right? So this is what's happening. So I want to hold this spot. And while I'm showing glorified, um, we're going to go to Acts. Hold, hold the Matthews and go to Acts. We're going to go to Acts, um, brother, uh, chapter 26. Because we are in a certain body, but we're not in our glorified body. And Christ, uh, he, he um, talks about this and alludes to this. Even in John, he said, glorify me you know, with the glory I had before the world began. So what we see now when he was on earth and in that fleshly body, that's not his glory. That ain't his, his, his true nature. That's nature he put on. And we, we, we read that even when we go to Hebrews, we've seen that he had to come what? In the likeness of flesh, right? For the suffering of death, he had to put on, but that's not his true nature. Okay. So we're going to Acts 26, Acts 26, and we're going to go down to verse, I'm trying to get the context, let me see, give me verse 12. This is when Paul is just about to get into his call. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, I saw on the way light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shine around about me and them which journey with me. So it was about midday, right? The middle of the day. He's re reiterating and said, okay, I saw in the way a light from heaven. Now, what does it mean in, above the brightness of the sun? I know it's old English can kind of mess people up. Well, not really old English, but figurative talk what it means to be above the brightness of the sun don't think too hard what does it mean go ahead um elder and then sean he outside it outshines the sun because his, his, his um glory is brighter than even the sun i did post in ecclesiastes 10 000, 10 000 times brighter than the sun uh. Exactly. Uh, Brother Sean? You already answered it. Let's go. Yes. So it's not talking about the light was above the sun. You see the sun, then sun's above it. It's saying it was brighter than the sun. Okay? And you know when we try to look at the sun, right? That's why people got what? Sunglasses. Because you try to look at the sun, it blinds you, right? So it's saying this light was even brighter than that. Just showing this analogy. I saw in the way light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and then was journey with me. All right. Um, you read verse 14. And when we and when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a loud voice, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why per why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. All right, so it's, it's talking about Saul because Saul was persecuting the church, right? And when you persecute in the church, who does it? Who are you directly persecuting? Christ. That's what people don't realize. What you do to God's people, listen, it ain't, it ain't just to them. You want to get, you know, the father and the son upset because you're doing it to them. What you do to the least of them, you do to me, right? So this is why we need to be mindful of how we treat one another. Because y'all are anointed of God. All right? So how you treat one another is directly how you treat in Christ or how you would treat Christ or God. You know, people are like, oh, if Christ was here, I would be around him. I would be serving him. I'll be doing all this stuff. No, you wouldn't. Because you can't even love your brother or sister that's right in front of you. Okay? 
But that's another subject. Um, verse 15, Brother Kai. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. So what was that bright light coming and representing and all that stuff? Christ. All right. So you just put a little glory. When you talk about the brightness, you'll see certain things in the scriptures talking about brightness and glory and righteousness is, is dealing with that aspect. All right. Because we will also um, get a different body and we will get a glorified body as well. All right. So you'll see certain scriptures that deal with that as well. So um, let's go back to Matthew 17. So this is why I say just give a, a, a glorified body, you know, um, just change a little bit for them for a certain example. All right. Give them an example. All right. So his face was as bright as the sun and his raiment was white as the light. All right. It's trying to illustrate that righteousness. Okay. All right. Verse three. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. All right. So we got now Moses and Elias. Who's Elias? Somebody give me who Elias is. Elijah. Elijah. All right. Elijah. All right. So just like we talked about last night, some of the names kind of, um, sometimes you got in the Hebrew and sometimes it comes over here. It's Greek, but you just have to connect them. So um, Elias is Elijah. You see something like Isaiah, that's Isaiah. Um, you'll see certain things like that. All right. So there appeared to him talking Moses and Elias. Um, I think if you go to Luke, it'll, it'll tell you what they was talking about. I think it was talking about um, um, after he dies or whatever, but not important right now. Um, so Moses and Elias is talking with Christ. All right. Yes, Moses and Elijah um, died and everything. So we understand the spiritual matter is going on. Verse four. Then answer Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If that will, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. All right. So what Peter, what, what's Peter saying? Peter said, it's good for us to be here. And then what did Peter offer to do? What is Peter offering to do? This gives us even a little knowledge of how our, you know, some of our forefathers, some of our customs, I'll say. What was Peter offering to do? I shouldn't be thinking too hard. I ain't giving y'all no trick question. This is right in the verse. Read it again, uh, Brother Kai. Then answer Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. So what is Peter offering to do? Mother Val, Mother Val's the MVP today. Go ahead, Mother Val. <laughs> Make tabernacles for each one of them. Make a tabernacle for each one of them. Why is he offering that? Why is he offering to do that? What is this showing us? I don't think he's offering to make tabernacles for him. See, people always think about nowadays, I think it's crazy and all that stuff, but our forefathers had some stuff in them too, right? It was a, it was a place, a, a, a memorial for them. It's like, let, let's make a memorial for uh, Elijah, right? Because Elijah was a great prophet, right? He's one of the well-known prophets. We're going to make a, make a tabernacle for him. We also going to make one for Moses because we know every everybody loved Moses. Unless you were the people in the wilderness, you know. But everybody after that, everybody referred to Moses as you know one of the top people. So he's like, listen, I want to give something to honor Moses. We'll make something to honor um, Elijah, and we'll make something to honor Christ. Okay, we do not need to do that, y'all. All right, I don't care how great somebody. We don't need to do that. Okay, but let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going to go on. So he's making this offer and saying, Lord, I'm glad we're here. This, this is good for us to be here and witness this. Let, let us make this. And sometimes we get caught up in that moment. Let us, let us make these things for them. All right, verse five. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. 
and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, and whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. So what happened, and why do you think this happened? All right, read that again, uh, Brother Kai. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, and whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. All right, so there's a couple things that we can grab from here. Um, Elder, I think you had your hand up. Yeah. yeah, he didn't want them to switch their focus from what was going on and get focused on the other thing. He wanted them to stay focused on that this was who was sent. This is that person that was sent to do what they knew was coming. So he wanted to bring their focus back to that. And who is illustrating this? Well, I would say who's, who's representing this? Who is the person? Um, the most high, the most high, the most high God. So, mm -hmm. good, good. Brother Sean, what you got? You're on mute, Brother Sean. Um, okay. Well, it's, it's also it's illustrating because um, one thing about our people, you know, you know, we have um, our ancestors, right? Or like our forefathers, we had some great forefathers. Mm -hmm. you know, Elijah, Moses, David, Solomon. So a lot of times, what we do as people is we, we put them on a pedestal. And I think what the Most High was showing there was, like, look, nah, my son is greater than them. You know what I mean? Like, these guys were, they I, they did some great things for our, for our people. But don't put them on the same pedestal as the Son of God, Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's saying, hear me now. This is my son. Hear him. Come. And this is what he was showing even yeah. through the scriptures. Like when you read Hebrews chapter one, he said, yeah, I spoke to you about the people, spoke to y'all to the prophets, but now hear my son. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he's putting Christ on that pedestal like, nah, don't even put, that's why Christ was like, no. I mean, that's like, yeah, like oh, they want to build an altar for Moses. No, why, why would you want to build an altar for Moses? These are just regular men. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So that's what he's showing us now to this day. We don't put people, even though we got some great people in our, you know, our nation that do some great things, but we don't put them on a pedestal as Christ. Mm -hmm. So the, the father was showing them, no. And that's why when you read in the book of Hebrews, which we're going to get back to, when you see the first chapter and the second chapter is talking about Christ, how he is the one, and especially mm -hmm. chapter two, especially chapter three was showing that Christ is higher He's greater than Moses. We wrote, we read last night. If you really, people have really understood it. It was showing that Christ is greater than Moses. So that's what he was showing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful breakdown of illustration. <laughs> this is always, this is why when we see things happening now, it is nothing new. Our people always want to give reference to things. Sometimes our focus, like another was bringing out too, it's on the wrong thing. Their whole comp, remember when Christ was talking, remember what they responded? We're not a full occasion. We have Abraham's seed. They always do another forefather in front. So that's why the father like, listen, this is my son. And I know somebody, oh, well, we're all children of God. No, no. He, he, he's being very specific with that beloved and everything. This, this son is special. This is the prodigy. This, this is, this is the, the best of the crops, right? We're here with Christ. So one thing we always got to realize Christ supersedes these other prophets. Even though they're, they're saying the same thing, that all the prophets, is, unless you're a false prophet, you're going right in line with Christ. But this is why you'll see sometimes in the world, you'll say something that what Christ said, you know, um, something like, if you love me, keep my commandments. And then you'll hear somebody respond saying, but Paul, and you'll see sometimes we'd be ready to lose it. Like, wait up, who? Why would you think Paul would go over Christ, even though Paul's not disagreeing with Christ? They just don't understand. But it's like, you can't grab somebody to go over Christ. All right? I want us to make sure we understand that. Christ is the num the best teacher we, we had that That's came right. from the scene. This is why we call it master teacher. He is that master teacher. There, we have some great teachers. Nothing against Paul, Moses, a lot. It ain't nothing against them. But Christ is above them 
Why? That's why he's referred to, we read in Hebrews, he's referred to as what kind of priest? The high priest. These other ones is good. They're good messengers. They're good servants and they're doing the work of God. But he is the high priest. There's certain things they couldn't do that he could do. There's certain things they was affected by that he's not affected by. He was sinless. He's seen the father. He declared he has certain things that the other ones didn't get to. All right. So what Brother Sean brought out beautifully is that Christ is the focus. And Elder was mentioning too, Christ is the focus. Don't put don't put no, don't try to put no Moses or Elijah next to him. He said, uh-uh, this is my son. Worry about what he's saying. Don't focus on the other two. He's the one that counts. All right. But the other Elijah and them were still great. I don't want to get nobody get all crazy. They were still great. But Christ is the ultimate one. All right. He's the ultimate son. All right. Thank you, brothers. Anybody else have anything to add to that? Um, Elder. Yeah, just because my my mind works crazy. I don't think any of them pulled a photo out and said, hey, that's Elijah, that's Moses. So their understanding had to be opened up because this was BC, not before the common era. It was before cell phones. So no one had a picture and said, oh, that looks like Moses. <laughs> so their understanding had to be opened. And I, that's just the way my mind worked. Because when I saw it again, I was like, you know, that's kind of weird that they all knew who they were. I used to say the same thing when I read it <laughs> as well. So even, even with some of the visions and stuff they will get, you know, sometimes it's like, how did you know that, you know, but when you're in that, that spirit, you know, God is opening up understanding. So how they did it, it was Moses and Elias. And we know it was because Christ didn't correct them either. You know, after they didn't say, no, that ain't Moses and Elias, you know, so they knew. Okay. So uh, while yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And if you remember when we read, we did our readings in Exodus, remember, um, God presence, they'll know God presence came down the temple with what? The, the cloud will come down on it. And they knew uh, God was in the midst of the temple. All right. So kind of showing that same illustration. Okay. So this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. All right. Hear ye him. Why? Because it already was talked about. What's that scripture? Kai always go to it, always talks about it with Christ. 18. Oh, man. What is it? Say it again. Deuteronomy 18, I believe, uh, and 15. Yes, or 18. And Always memorize Deuteronomy 18, 18, but yes. It, yep. it's, uh, <laughs> I know you're in the right area. Yep. Yep. All right. So we go there. This is a good one. Definitely when people like, you know, uh, while we believe in Christ and, that, and things of that nature, it was prophesied. All right. This is what Christ would talk about. You know, they, they would be glad to see my day. You know, they, you know, I'm in the volume of the book. He's not just speaking these things. He is in this book all in it. In the Old Testament, before he ever came um, in the flesh on the scene of the New Testament, he's written all in the Old Testament. Okay. It's just that sometimes we don't um, understand it or catch it. Uh, 18, yeah, get 15. Yeah, you're right. 15. Yeah. The Lord thy God will raise up the unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren and like unto me unto him ye shall hearken all right so god's going to raise up a prophet right prophets the ones that speak the word of god mm -hmm. from the midst of thee i want y'all to catch certain things because when he said we, we have to complete all that the scripture said this is part of it christ was just coming out of nowhere that mm -mm. He had to be a prophet from the midst of thee, from amongst you, of thy brethren. This is why it talks about it saying, you know, he came out of uh, Judah and everything. He had to come out of the lineage. He had to be an Israelite because that was prophesied. This is why some people don't understand. They don't even know how to identify Christ. The only way to identify him is you had to get the writings. If you didn't understand, if you didn't get these writings, these scriptures, you wouldn't be looking for them. You wouldn't even know what to look for. That's why when Paul goes to Romans chapter three, he said, what advantage have the Jew? He said, chiefly, he said, much every way. What's the advantage they have? Because they have the oracles. Come. They know what to look for. What's the proof of that? You go to Matthew, didn't King Herod? 
Remember when the wise men said, we we going to see him? They, they was bringing their gifts mm -hmm. to him. Did Herod know where to look or to search? Mm-mm. What we do? He had to grab the people. Mm -hmm. He had to grab some. It's like, whoa, 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 where he at? And they went to the scripture and said, well, it said he's going to be coming from here. That's the setup that the most high had. Okay. That's, right. That's another, <laughs> another lesson. All right. So of that brethren, like unto me, unto him, ye shall hearken. Another word for hearken is what? Hear. You are going to hear this prophet that I am going to raise up. Okay. Uh, verse 16. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. Yeah, so they, they were scared. <laughs> they didn't want to hear uh, God's voice, how it came um, from off the mountain. Brother Sean, you had your hand up. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to say real quick, um, because a lot of some people they read this on um, Deuteronomy uh, fifty through eighteen, and they they try to say it's not uh, Christ who is talking about. Uh, one the one thing that stuck out to me that, that you know is Christ because they say it's Joshua or something else. But the, the reason why because Moses Moses said he said uh, uh, Most High is going to raise up a prophet like it unto me. And one thing that stuck out to me is Moses was the only prophet of the Lord that ever sacrifice or will put his life on the line for the nation of Israel. No other prophet did it. Not Joshua, not Isaiah, not Isaiah, not Jeremiah. Moses went to the most high and said he was going, he wanted to atone for Israel until what he said, blot out my name out the book. Yep, I never say that. He for the nation of Israel, he said basically send me to the lake of fire when it's time so you can save these people and hopefully you get the right people you need. And that's what Moses did. And Christ came to the nation of Israel, put his life on the line. He didn't accept Moses' life, but he was the only one who did it. So that's how you know. When he said, make a uh, set, uh, set a prophet up, liken unto me, that right there tells you that this is talking about Christ, the Son of God. Absolutely. So more parallels is, you know, Moses got his teaching. Um, from the Most High, he was giving them the law instruction, and, and, and he he he's uh, reiterating it. Same thing with Christ. Christ got a different connection than regular prophets. One of the big things is how Moses was born. Right, everybody two years and under was killed. That didn't happen with Jeremiah. That didn't happen with Joshua. That didn't happen with Isaiah. That didn't happen with them prophets. Who's the other person that's written that two years and under all the children were killed by some king? trying to destroy it and with Christ. See, there's other links. So when you saying like it unto me, what's well, this is one aspect, some other aspects. We might do a lesson like that in the future. All right. Um, that's a great point, Brother Sean. Thank you for bringing that out. Um, where we at? Verse 17. Verse 17. 17. And the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. Mm-hmm. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. He said, and will put my words in his mouth. He's uh -huh. not saying what he thinks or what he want to say. He said, I'm going to put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I command them. Don't Christ go and say, I don't have no doctrine. I only speak what the Father um, tells me to speak. So when he's saying, my Father's greater than I, who's actually saying that? His Father's telling him to tell us that. Mm -hmm. But people saying, I know what he said, but uh, uh, Paul, and what about the other writings? Listen, who is speaking exact words? If you are confused with anything, take this guy. Because what else it says? Read verse 19. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. If you don't listen to the words that he shall speak in my name and my authority, that's what the name is, in my authority, what? I will require it of him. And if you lack it, we already know what he's talking about when we require it of him. Mm -hmm. That's why when Christ saying, 
if you don't believe I'm he, you'll die in your sins. But people saying, oh, see, he's illustrating that he's the father. No, if you don't believe I'm what? This prophet, you're going to die in your sins. Why? Because you're going to what? Require it of him. But because somebody taught you a doctrine, you try to force that doctrine to work and go against what Christ is saying. Well, not going Christ saying, what the father is saying. We make big mistakes. But it fits, beloved. It fits. Okay. All right. Let's go back to where we was at. Okay. Let's go back. So it was already probably even Moses was telling us it's going to be a prophet coming. You got to hear him. This is why when people was accepting Christ, they was like, this is the one. Are you that Sunday? Are you this one that was talked about with the, the prophet? They, they've been talking about you. They was waiting on this guy to come. And it should have been a glad time. All right. All right. Uh, I think Sean got his hand up. Does he? Does he? Um, go ahead, brother. No, my hand wasn't up. Okay, I just saw it from the screen. My bad. No problem. No problem. All right. An elder did put on the chat, you know, that John 7 16, Jesus answered him and said, My doctrine is not mine, but him, but his that sent me. Absolutely, that's that's um that's a good one for it. All right. And there's others. Uh verse, what verse we at in chapter 17. I think seven. Uh, uh, give me six. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, <laughs> you know, everybody saying, oh, when I see God be all happy. The, the, the uh, disciples were scared when he heard that voice. All right. So they fell to their face. Um, all right. And Jesus came and touched them and said, arise and be not afraid. All right. So, um, Christ had to touch him and saying, don't be scared. I'm here, right? He, he, he's showing that, that comfort, right? It's comforting him because they were being all scared again. Um, so he touched him and saying, don't, don't be scared. You know, the father's wanted to illustrate and correct y'all, let y'all know y'all need to be focusing on what I'm saying and not, don't, don't try to share that with other people. All right. Read. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. All right. Go over. All right. Let's go to verse nine. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. All right. So Christ tell them, Don't tell nobody this until I am dead and risen again. All right. So this is a secret that they had to keep until after he was resurrected. All right. Do we have any questions? All right, brother. And his disciples asked him, saying, why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? All right. So they're dealing with something. And the disciples had, this is showing that disciples did have some knowledge of the book. All right. Because there's certain things that had to come. Remember, they knew the scriptures. It can't be broken. All right. So when people, when you deal with things with Christ, if you found one scripture that was out of place in that Old Testament, you can say that's not him. Because you know, remember we read, we talked about before in Isaiah, his word don't come back void. Whatever he say going to happen is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if he said he's going to be liking his brother, he's going to be likened to his brother. Okay? If he's saying that, what? Why then say the scribe that Elias must first come? Okay, why, why did the prophet saying that Elias got to come? You can't be doing all this stuff you, you saying you're doing and everything. Elias got to come before you. That's what the scripture said. We're going to get to it. Um, read verse 11. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. Don't worry. Elias what? And this is Elijah. Truly shall first come and restore all things. They're like, listen, he's like, the scriptures ain't messed up. I know what y'all saying. Elijah, he, he's going to come and restore it. But read verse 12. But I say unto you that Elias has come already, uh -oh. and they knew him not, mm -hmm. but had done unto him whatsoever they listed. 
-hmm. Likewise, shall also the son of man suffer of them. All right. So he's saying he is, he is, Elias is supposed to come and restore all things. Y'all are correct, uh, brothers. That is the scripture. But he said, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you a little secret. Elias already came <laughs> and they knew him not, but done unto him whatsoever they listed. He's saying he already came and they ain't listened to him. They did whatever they wanted to him. Okay. Let's catch it. What scripture are they referring to? Anybody know? Scripture in the Old Testament that they are referring to. Let's go to Malachi. Go to Malachi chapter four. The last book in the, uh, the Old Testament. So we're going to go to Malachi chapter four, all right? Malachi chapter four. And brother, I want you to read give me verse four, Malachi four, four. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him and Horeb for all Israel with the statues and judgments. <laughs> God is so good. He yep. put it right in, before you even get to the New Testament. As what did he tell you to do? What did he tell you to do? Remember. Remember the law of Moses, mm -hmm. which I commanded him in Horeb. For what? All Israel with the statutes of judgment. Beautiful. The last book, the last chapter, he's talking about the commandments. Guess what? In the last book, in the whole book, right? It talks about doing the commandments. But you mm -hmm. got people teach you that it's not nothing to worry about. How? How? Somebody's not reading. That's why I say you got to be mindful of these false teachers. All yep. right, beloved? All right, but that's not the subject today. Verse five, verse five. Listen to this. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So he's saying, I'm going to send Elijah before what day? The great and dreadful day of the Lord. All right. So and that's why they say Elijah must first come. All right. Because they remember this. <laughs> we remember reading it. Malachi said Elijah going to come. All right. So th they was right. Verse six. He shall do? turn the heart of the fathers to the children mm -hmm. and the heart of the children to their fathers. That's I come and smite the earth with a curse. So he going to put things back in order. All right. Fathers to the children and heart of the children to their father. All mm -hmm. right. Because when we going off and we send it, our minds start to get messed up. We start going against the laws. Right. We read a few weeks ago what uh, people you know, they said the, the, the law says it was to honor mother and father, but what were they saying? Those said dishonor mother and father, you know, calling it a blessing. Like, like it is acceptable. Being lawless is never good, beloved. Never good. Okay. So we see Elijah the prophet must first come. So the big question is like, okay, well, they know Elijah died, right? Elijah's dead at this point. So, okay, Elijah's going to have to come and he's, he, he's going to be there. All right. So maybe people look at it as, you know, maybe because they just seen Elias and Moses. Maybe maybe that's what he's illustrating. Who knows? Let's read. All right. Let's get back to Matthew 17. Because he's saying Elias already came and they, they did something to him like, huh? The only Elias we just read is, is this one. Is it, is it this guy that we read in verse four? I mean, in verse, yeah, in verse four and five with Moses. Let's see. Uh, read verse 12 again for everybody. Keep it fresh in their mind. But I say unto you that Elias has come already, and they knew him not, but have mm -hmm. done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise, mm -hmm. shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. So he's saying Elias came, and they didn't understand of Elias, and they did whatever they, they wanted to do to him. And the same thing they're going to do unto me, because what? They ain't going to recognize me either. Right, then they go and kill and persecute Christ. They, they didn't fully understand 
who this was. All right. Verse 13. Could you scroll down, beloved? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I got my book, but I don't know if everybody else can see. No, nah, you're good. Good call. Thank you. Okay. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Then the disciples said, oh, he's talking about John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So people was thinking just Elijah, how he was, that same by, mm -mm. he's saying, oh, Christ talking about John the Baptist. That's the one that they've been doing whatever to. So now he get it that what? The scriptures wasn't broken. We just didn't understand. And you see what happens a lot of times? A lot of people, a lot of times when we don't understand scriptures, we would just, you know, that Bible stuff, it, it, it's a bunch of content. It's, no, you don't understand. All right. And I'm sure there were some other ones because the disciples weren't the only ones that didn't understand that, right? But he opened up their mind because they were sincerely, they were sincerely trying to learn. Like, I know Elijah has to come, Lord. I believe you're him, but don't Elijah have to come first? So he's bringing it up and God had to open up their understanding. And using Christ, Christ like, this is what happens. You know, he came, he did it. And they're like, oh, it's John the Baptist. So they get it, they get it, all right? Verse 14, and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy upon my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and off into the water. All right. So we see, so when you hear lunatic, they, they use the word. Anybody know what a lunatic is? Somebody is crazy. <laughs> All right. Uh, mental illnesses. Yeah, you think we got somebody that got that mental illness, you know, or some people might refer to as crazy. All right. Yeah. All right. So um, so this this man is pleading, right? He, he and this is how he comes to him, verse 14. There came to a certain man kneeling down to him. So he, he's pleading, he he's he, he's um humble himself, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, right. For he is a lunatic and sore vexed. Oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft in the water. So sometimes he's, he's, he's about to burn up because he falls into the fire or in the water. It can result in drowning, right? So read verse 16. We need to listen to this. Listen to what's happening. And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. Uh-oh. So he's saying, listen, Lord, I'm only coming to you because I brought them to your followers, your disciples, and they could not cure them. One thing I want to grab, was the disciples curing people at this time? Throw this question out. Was the disciples curing people at this time? Mother Val. Yes, they were. Yes. They had the power and authority um, and they was curing people at this time, okay? But this one, they couldn't do for some reason. And that's something to show with us, right? There's some things you can do on God, and then there's some things that you might not be able to do right now. But let's see why they could not help this certain brother with his son, all right? So he's saying, I, I brought him to your disciple. They couldn't cure him. So I'm coming, I'm coming to the master. I'm going to the teacher and, and, and seeing if you can do it, all right? Verse 17, how does Jesus respond to this statement? Then, then Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. <laughs> what do you refer to that generation as? What's my, what, what do you call that generation? Two words. Let's start with that. Faithless and perverse generation. All right. There we go. Brother Sean, I see Mother Val. Brother Sean got it. Yes. Faithless and perverse yeah, generation. Already said it. No, he already said it. Okay. Mother Val, you say the same thing? You got something new? Same thing. Okay. Good, good. I'm sorry, y'all. I was quick to answer. I'm sorry. No, no. It's, a, it's no problem. Quick answer. So, faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? 
So this is what I, I want you to understand. They was able, they was curing people. They was curing a lot of sicknesses and things and doing healings and things of that nature. But he's still referring to them as a faithless and a perverse generation. And he said, how long I got to be with you? How long I got to be here suffering and doing these things with you? How long are you going to be faithless that I got to be around here? All right, let's read verse 18. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. All right, so Jesus had to rebuke that devil. So that devil seemed like he had a little stronghold. And we read um, a while ago, remember it talks about when um, when an unclean spirit leaves a man, right? And he said the house get cleaned up and garnished. What does it say when that spirit, it said that spirit goes out there and wandering, right? And if it can't find another host, what did that unclean spirit try to do? Elder got his hand up, what? It, it, it comes back with, with more, more spirits. Mm -hmm. I believe it, I believe it was seven. 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 Yeah, seven. So that number showing that completeness, right? When you're dealing with God and, and numbers and everything, seven more that like that completeness, like you know, seven days, right? So he's coming back and he's now trying to fortify that house, right? This is why you know when people have them um if they have certain like addictions, like drug addiction or whatever, right? And they get you know somewhat delivered from it, right? When they usually when they get clean and they good. When they get back, right, they, they, they break and relapse, usually it's what? It's harder to get off. It's not as easy as the first time when they got, got mm -hmm. off of that, right? So the same thing with this. If God deliver you from something, do not let that unclean spirit back in because it won't be as easy as before. You know, you're like, man, I had a spirit in me. And, you know, I went to the altar and I just prayed to God. And he just took that thing away from me. So you think, and sometimes the devil try to use it, Go ahead, you can indulge in that again. Oh, you know, it's easy. Just you got rid of it so easy the first time. So, you know, when it comes back, you do what you got to do. Just go to the altar and be that. Mm -mm. This is why you can't play with the most high. Now you have that thing completely fortified in you. And it's not saying that God can't take it out. I'm not arguing that, but it's not a guarantee. And it's going to be a real big struggle, way harder than it was before. You brought six, seven other friends. Very hard. Um, Elder, you got your hand up. Yeah, there's one account where um, Jesus asked the spirit, and he said, my name is Legion, for I am many. That's why, mm -hmm. you know, I, I knew that there was seven in one account, but there's an account where he says, for we are many. And I just wanted to preface that there's a time where he says, we are many. So, I, you know, we don't, it doesn't give the account of what the man did, but we know at that point he was, comp he was compelled to ask the demon uh, questions and the demon said when he asked him what was his name he said he answered saying my name is legion for we are men mm -hmm. i think that's in uh, mark yeah so that's a um definitely another great account when you go to the uh the seven sons of siva we'll, we'll probably deal with that um listen one is enough beloved do not try to call out a, a, a spirit if you are not equipped <laughs> like that right now this is not something you read oh it's not they was able to do it. okay let me just start trying to make sure beloved you are <laughs> you are fortified and god's call you to do certain things because you can call it out but then what you going to do once it's out and there was some seven brothers that you know got zealous and they went in there and called that devil out and that devil came out <laughs> and he whooped up on all of them that they was naked and wounded leaving that house all right and that's not to make fear I ain't get people scared you know, but it's just being mindful. Make sure you're being serious about this thing. These demons and unclean spirits are real. Okay. Sometimes when they, when that demon is being a demon in that corner, let it be. Don't try to be the big old hero. Well, you know, I got the Holy Ghost. So, and I got the spirit of God on me. So I'm going to go and call this demon out. And then God like, I ain't tell you to do all that. And now you're on your own. Right. So be very mindful. I do not tell people just go out there. That's why you shouldn't just lay hands on anybody suddenly. Be careful, beloved. All right. Go ahead, Brother Kai. Yeah, just to let you know, too, as well, that, you know, uh, devils can attack children. You know, like if you don't uh, have a head, hedge about you, you know, if you're not doing what the most high uh, telling you to do, you know, it's open season. 
You know what I mean? I don't know what this man did at the end of the day. That's why if you have children, you have to protect your children, beloved. Like, it's more and more wicked devices out here in this world. You have to guard them, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Great point. Um, Where were we at, brother? Uh, right. So he rebuked them, and he was out there. That was verse 18. He rebuked them. Yep. Rebuked the devil and it departed out of him, and the child was cured that very hour. So the reason why sometimes they put that time stamp on there is that you know it was from what Jesus did. It was no thing that eventually left or whatever. He rebuked it. That spirit got right out. All right. Mm -hmm. So when you're on that spirit of God, rebuke it. Get that thing right out. Okay. So um, and that's a great point about being children. Them things don't they don't discriminate, do they? Nope. All right. Verse uh, 19, brother. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? So they asking a great question. They're like, well, hold up. We've been casting these demons out like there was nothing. Why this one? What happened to my power? You, you start to, to your, your, your faith start to get shaken up sometimes, right? You know, sometimes we do things and then, wait up, it didn't work. Now we start calculating, wait up. Is it because I didn't pray an extra day this week? Oh, maybe, maybe I have to fast, you know, double this time. You know, sometimes our faith get a little waver when something, you know, ain't as easy. All right. So they said, why couldn't we cast them out? All right. Verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, mm -hmm. for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say to the so lucky. You shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Mm -hmm. So we see um, the, the status that, that Christ put on. Well, somebody give me, what, what do y'all get from verse 20? Somebody give me some illustration of verse 20. I ain't going to explain. What, what y'all get from it? What is he saying there? What is he saying in verse 20? Because he's giving an answer out. They asked him a question. He, he's giving an answer. Read verse 19 and 20 for us again, uh, Brother Kai. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. Hey, hold it. Hold it right there. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't they cast that devil out, beloved? What is the answer that Christ gave them why they couldn't cast it out? Uh, their unbelief. There we go. Even the children getting it. See, Christ, Christ makes it very simple. Your unbelief is why it could happen. Don't be looking at all these other things. No, you didn't believe. And it's like, and I used to ponder that thing like, wait up. What do you mean they didn't believe? They've been casting out things all the time. Like, <laughs> why did they believe? That, that's why they did it. They thought it would have happened just like every time before. But he's telling them, because y'all didn't believe. Elder, Elder, you had something? Oh, did this no, 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 no. Okay. Because of your unbelief. All right, keep reading um, with that. Uh, um, excuse me, Kai. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing mm -hmm. shall be impossible unto you. Exactly, right? So he's saying, if you just had a little bit of belief, beloved, this is what us, mm -hmm. if we had just the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, all right, then anybody, anybody ever see a mustard seed? Let me let me try to find and put it on the screen. Let me let me Google. Good old Google. Go ahead, Elder, while I'm doing it. Yeah, it's 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 one of the smaller seeds. It's it's, it's tiny because we plant small. My wife plants so If you see, if you if you buy a non-GMO banana and you bite into it, it's little tiny seeds. It's smaller than even a banana seed. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, great point. So y'all, um, and, and I'll just correct with that. Can y'all see that picture? Mm -hmm. Trying to show it on the, the little finger. But right, y'all see, look all these ones in this little uh, spoon and everything, like hundreds in there. <laughs> so uh, it can be kind of insulting if you if you if you're not uh in the right space. But he's saying, listen, if y'all have faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you should be able to tell this mountain to remove. This should be very humbling for everybody. If you ever think you uplifted or you all that, you should go out. I'm gonna go out there and tell that mountain to remove itself. If you can't do that, you don't even got this much of faith. Think about that, beloved. He said, just a tiny, if you have faith this small, you can tell the mountain to remove itself. Think about just a, 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 a spoonful of faith, what we can do. Mm -hmm. This can be insulting to some, but it should be a motivation for us. How much we can get to, man. We got, we got lots of room. So I said, it's always room for improvement, beloved. All right. But with this story, I remember it's in another account. So that's why I want to uh, get it because there's something else that the father said that I like. Uh, Matthew, uh, Mark, Mark 9, I believe it is. Let me look. Yes. Give me Mark 9. Remember, I tell you with some of these things, the stories are reiterated, but you know, sometimes with the gospel, one might have something the other one don't have. So sometimes to get the complete uh, picture of it um, and perspective, you have to sometimes jump to the other ones to get the same account. Okay. So this one, Mark 9. And we're going to jump down to about verse. Give me verse 19. Say a long chapter, so I got time. He answered him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. All right, same account, okay? This is Mark 9 and 19 he just read, all right? Next verse. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground in a wobble foamy. me. See how it gets a little different, right? This, when, he, when he saw him, he saw right? That's where he started acting up, trying to tear him apart. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. So I guess, um, what is that with seizures? I don't know if we got any medical people. What, is that where they start foaming and stuff in the mouth? Uh, whatever, that started happening, okay? So um, verse 21. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. So this spear was in him since a child. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Brother Kai was bringing out. All right. That's why we need to protect our, our children. We need to be teaching them correctly. We need to be praying for them. Right. Verse 22. And oftentimes they have cast him into the fire and into mm -hmm. the waters to destroy him. But mm -hmm. thou couldst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. So we're going to see a different statement on this one, all right? So I want you to catch it. And oftentimes the water, they, they try to toss him in water and fire to destroy him. These demons try to destroy you, okay? And it says, listen what he said, but if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Now, what was the problem with that statement? See, if anybody caught it, you might not see no problem with the statement on the surface. But what was the problem with that? Because the other one seemed like he was getting at the disciples. But I want to show you something. Mother Val. There was some doubt there. Yeah. Sort of questioning. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. He said, but if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. If you can, can you please Right? Because when the disciples failed, now he's like, I, maybe this is, what, what you think? Maybe this is an impossible case. I, I, took him, I took him to the deacon and the elder. They couldn't do it. So pastor, if you, if you can, right? <laughs> Doing something like that, right? All right, but let's keep reading, uh, Kai. 
Jesus said, if I'm, Jesus said unto him, if thou canest believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. You got to get the concept that these things is not impossible. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm what Philippians 4 13. I can do all things in Christ Jesus that strengthen me. We have to, we have some mental blocks. We got some unbelief in us. Sometimes it's taught, right? Sometimes we get taught uh, unbelief or we get taught doubt. And um, people that have children or young ones, you got to make sure you're not teaching and preaching doubt into your children. Just because you don't have the faith, don't put now teaching them to be faithless. And sometimes we do that, sometimes unintentionally, but we have to be mindful of that. All right. So Christ saying, if you can't believe all things are possible to him that believeth. Now, reverse 24, because I don't think this is in the Matthew account. And the straight and straightway, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Oh, now y'all see it's a difference, don't it? Mm -hmm. You see, because sometimes we have to be a kind of, sometimes our children can't break through because of something of our unbelief. Mm -hmm. Something I always thought about, and I'm like, I have to make sure I always discipline myself. This always makes me think about it. He said, straightway the father of the child cried out. The father knew it was something in him. But it was easy to blame and say, see, your disciples couldn't do it. Y'all see that? Sometimes we'll blame others for our shortcomings. It's, it's your fault of why I can't be where I'm at. I'll be close to God if, if you weren't doing this or the music wasn't like this or you taught like this. See, it's easy to point at something else. But see, when you deal with the spirit of God, it's going to hit you first. That's why I said, let a, a man examine himself. Get that moat out your own eye. But what Christ saying, he said, that brother cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Even though I believe, I know there's still that ounce of disbelief in there. He's saying, help my unbelief. I think uh, one of the sisters brought it out a few weeks ago. Throw your cares and everything on him. He said, I, 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 true, I want to believe with all my heart. But there's some unbelief. But please take that unbelief and fix it for me. Now let's read the next verse. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. All right. So <laughs> I know the spirits go out, and sometimes, you know, they wander, they try to get back in. I don't know if this spirit got back into his body <laughs> because of what Christ said, but um, he charged it. And, and what Christ doing, he wasn't speaking with no doubt. He wasn't speaking to, you know what, I'm going to put my hands on him and hopefully. He said what? He talked that spirit direct. You dumb and deaf spirit. I know what spirit you are. And I'm going to charge you. I'm going to tell you, because I got authority to tell you, come up out of him and you better not come in him no more. He treated him like he, <laughs> he, he their father's up. You better get out and you better not come back. We got, this is the book. We, we, our big brother's a bully to these evil spirits. That's right. That's why I said, call on them. Ask them. That's right. These spirits don't have, no, they don't want to do nothing with Christ. Nope. They know they don't got nothing on them. Don't let nobody teach you differently. Read what happened, verse 26. And the spirit cried and writ him sore and came out of him. It was as one dead. And so much that they, many said he is dead. So that thing, even though that's even though he called that spirit out, that spirit was trying to take that, take him with him, right? Mm -hmm. So we just, and you know, how sometimes you you fight with something, and after that, you just worn out. Your body, your flesh is just tired. So after that thing, the ripped him, it just was, because that thing almost became the life of that that body. Some people being possessed by that spirit, that spirit takes over so long that it's almost. It, it lives. It, it is part of your body. So it took that thing out. It's like he just he's just laid out there and limp. That child, read. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted mm -hmm. him up and arose. Mm -hmm. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, "Why could not we cast him out?" Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, "This this kind come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting." All right, gave the answer. Let's go back to Matthew because that's where that picks up. 
right? So just, I just wanted to show people that, you know, when you go to the other accounts, sometimes it gets some detail. Cause we see it, it didn't get that detail in Matthews, did it? Mm -mm. There were some other little, little uh, jewels that we grabbed there, okay? Um, we have Matthew 17, read verse 20 and 21. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and, ye mm -hmm. shall and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How mm -hmm. be it? This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. And this is why it's important, because Mark didn't tell you about um, the grain of mustard seed, did it? But this one did. But this one didn't tell you that they asked that question first. Remember, they said, why couldn't we um, right before this? Well, they asked it in verse 19, so still can kind of work, right? So this is good sometimes to read when you go into the Gospels, kind of get the other pieces of it, and you get a, um, a clear picture. But you can still see what's going on, all right? So how be it this kind goeth not out by prayer, um, go out but by prayer and fasting. All right. There's some things, some demons. We're gonna have to pray and fast. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to strengthen these this spirit, right? So it's always appropriate. You don't have to just wait for uh, uh, well, the Day of Atonement to fast. No, the Lord put on your mind and fast. You feeling weak? You feeling like you have a lot of unbelief? Fasting is a tool. Same thing with prayer. You feel like that, you know, the things that things didn't used to bother me this easy. That stuff is starting to bother me. I, I'm feeling so worried. I'm feeling depressed. You need, all right, let's get to that prayer. Reading the book, that's a form of prayer as well. Singing spiritual hymns, that's a form of it. I'm telling you, you go ahead and listen to um, worldly music for about three, four weeks straight. And then you might listen to some, some, um, some spiritual songs. And see if that affects your spirit. I'm telling you, you won't realize I, it will affect your spirit. Even if you say, oh, this is just worldly music I ain't worried about, it affects your spirit. My wife usually talked about that. She said, I, she said one day at work, she going through stress. She's like, it must have been God. I've listened to a lesson or I was listening to, you know, some, uh, some music. And he said, the, the thing that would have affected me any other day, it didn't have that same effect. And this is why I tell people, the world ain't changed. The world's been wicked. Oh. <laughs> it ain't like it, it's, it's more wicked today. To, no, it's been wicked. We get affected because our spirit ain't in the right spot. When we walk in an alignment and our focus is on God, that stuff don't bother. We have perfect peace. But when we get out of focus and focusing on the wrong thing, then those things affect us. Those other spirits try to hop on us. Okay, but it's not the world, it ain't that they, they've been wicked, the world been wicked and in chaos. But we have to make sure we are staying in the realm of the spirit of God. All right, all right, let's keep going, brother Kai. And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, mm -hmm. and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceedingly sorry. All right. So he's telling them again. He told them a couple of times. <laughs> they go, you know, die and rise in three days. I don't know why they're surprised by some of this stuff. But sometimes you're hearing it. And, you know, sometimes you're hearing people, but you ain't really hearing them. You know, you ain't. Like, yeah, he's talking about this stuff, but he ain't going to die, man. He's he's with us every day. You know, everything kind of good. He ain't going to die. They see these miracles he's doing. Yeah, he ain't going to die and everything. All right. Sometimes you get like that. But they were sorry that they heard it. Like, man. This guy keeps talking about he's going to die. We don't want him to die, all right? And that's, you know, that's that's natural. You don't want people to die, um, good people to die. So I'm going to sit here and sin her wrong for it, you know, so emotion. Verse 24. And when they were come to Caponium, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, doth not your master pay tribute? Okay. So um, in Caponium, they that received tribute money, so people almost like a, kind of say a tax collector, you know? So there's some people that will go there and they will take tribute money, all right? So they came to Peter and said, doth your master pay tribute, okay? So I don't know if anybody knows about this, but um, this is dealing with the temple tax, okay? Um, I didn't know this always, but look it up as well. 
Um, hold this spot. Hold this Matthew 17. Um, let's go to uh, Exodus 30. Okay. Hold this and go to Exodus uh, 30. There's another spot in the Old Testament too. I reinforce it, but I'm just going to give you all one right now. Right. It's best to trip Christ up, I see. Mm. Mm, yeah, they were trying to they were trying to set him up. <laughs> yeah. It's sad. They didn't ask him. They, they, they basically said, Do your master pay tribute? You know, because they were going they was gonna snitch on him if he didn't. All right. So Exodus 30. Oh, I'm sorry, I put it on the screen. Genesis Exodus, the second book, beloved. Exodus 30. And we're gonna just go. Um, I think it's verse 13, if I'm mistaken. My bad. Um, give, me, give me 11. Go up to 11 just so you can get some context. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give, then, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord. When thou numberest them, that there be no plague among them, when thou numberest them. Mm -hmm. this, they this they shall give. Everyone that passeth among them that are numbered, half of a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. A shekel is 20 garas. A half a shekel shall be the offering of the Lord. All right. So they should give to every man. Um that passive certain age, but read verse 14 so we can see the age. Everyone that passeth among them that are numbered from 20 years old and above shall give an offering unto the Lord. Um, verse 15. The rich shall not give more and the poor shall not give less than the half of a shekel when they give an offering unto the Lord to make an atonement for your souls. All right. So this was uh, part of that temple taxes where they uh, they got this from. All right, go back to Matthew 17. And we talked about the age yesterday. Uh, this one was saying 20 years and above. I think I was saying, I think I might, yeah, I think mistakenly said 22. And I think uh, Brother Sean and Elder corrected me was saying it's 20. So um, that's showing it. So when you look, let's go back to verse 20, uh, 24, read that again. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? Mm -hmm. He said, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, Why thinkest thou, Simon, of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute, of their own children or of strangers? <laughs> so Christ messed with him, saying, You know, uh, Simon, what do, you, what do you do? The kings of the earth do they do they require customs and tribute and stuff from their own people or from the strangers? How does Peter answer? Peter saith unto him, "Of strangers." Jesus saith unto him, "Then are the children free." And he said, "Well, you did it. You know, even the world have it where they take customs and everything mm -hmm. and, and tribute from the strangers of the you know of this." And he's saying. Peter was like, yeah, they take it from the strangers. They don't take it from the children. So Christ saying, oh, so, so the children are free. Based on think, implying that, you know, we should be free. We're the children. But uh, let's keep going. Verse 27. Last place. Not with, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them. Go down to the sea and cast an hook and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. Take that and give all to them for me and thee. All right. So um, he went, and this is why he paid it. Of course, he didn't want to offend. He said, I don't want to offend, so let's go and get this money for him, the tribute money for him. Um, but thinking about this, you know, when he comes in his kingdom, you know, it talks about how kings are going to bring their glory and everything. So it kind of showed, like, you know, strangers are going to be, you know, paying, you know, certain things. But that's another story. All right. Um, also, to look at this, So if you're not saying, lest we should offend them, go to the sea. Um, and, but the last piece of it was that take and give unto them for me and thee. So some historians will look at it 
and they will say that the other disciples were under the age. Well, they're not, they weren't the age of adults. Um, since, because remember, the only people that had to pay was what? What age you had to pay? What age and upward? 20 years old. 20 and up. So Christ didn't say pay for everybody who he said to pay for. He said unto them, for me and thee, for me and you, Peter. Mm -hmm. So there's some people that will say Peter was the only disciple that was like a grown up, like, you know, above age. And the other ones was kind of, you know, below. Not saying they were six or seven or anything, but, you know, that's something out there. Um, so you might, if you ever did some studying, you might see that as well to show it. I don't know their ages, so I'm not even going to uh, touch on that. All right. But there's something to throw out there. All right, beloved, do we have any other questions? Any other questions? All right. Um, that is Matthew's chapter 17. Um, next week, I plan on putting a lesson together. All right. And then after that, we'll go back to our Matthew's reading. Um, with that, say shalom. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>